Is inflation a quiet form of theft? Does it feel like your dollar is purchasing less and less by the day? Is the economic data even making sense? And is the steady erosion of your purchasing power putting your retirement at risk? More importantly, what can we do about it? How can investments in scarce assets like gold and silver or decentralized assets like Bitcoin be used to counterbalance this constant erosion of our savings and purchasing power? If you think you may be falling behind, see the link in the video description to access the free inflation retirement calculator to make sure that you are on track to discuss why gold works, why fiat currencies ultimately fail, and why gold and other scarce assets act as an insurance policy against risk, we will hear from economist and investor Keith Weiner, economist, White House advisor, and author Jim Rickards, macro analyst and investor Lynn Alden, and former congressman, activist, and author Ron Paul. It has been said, rightly, that he who holds the gold makes the rules. That general rule has held fast throughout the ages. When gold was used and the rules protected honest commerce, productive nations thrive. Today, the principles are the same, but the process is quite different. Gold is no longer a currency of the realm. Paper is. The truth now is he who prints the money makes the rules. Since printing paper money is nothing short of counterfeiting, the issuer of the international currency must always be the country with the military might to guarantee control over the system. We're so prop we're so awash in propaganda from the time we're two that you know if you go to Google Images or Bing Images and you say and you search for money, you get page after page after page of pictures of paper with green ink on it. That's what people think money looks like. You don't get gold coins or gold bars, you know, you get you get that. So in this world of propaganda, it's not obvious and not easy to see what you require of your monetary, you know, good, or your monetary substance. Mm -hmm. Most people just kind of accept that, you know, the dollar is money, the dollar's fine. Well, yeah, you know, there's inflation, but, you know, I'm sure the Fed will figure it out. You know, we'll muddle through. We always do. And boy, they're putting a lot of faith in something that doesn't deserve it. It's interesting. I find that uh, people abroad have a better understanding of gold than most Americans do. But um, it's basically 40 years of miseducation. You know, 1971 was the last time the United States was on the gold standard vis-a-vis -vis its uh, trading partners abroad. Since then, uh, really two generations of economists uh, led by uh, big names like Milton Friedman and then followed on by other prominent economists have taught over and over that uh, gold has no place in the monetary system. It's not elastic. It's not able to expand the money supply in times of crisis. It's uh, the famous Keynes phrase, uh, it's a barbarous relic, etc. So you have literally generations of very bright uh, college students and uh, everyday Americans who have been taught that gold is uh, something from the past and has no place in the monetary system. Now, every one of the things I just said is wrong. It's a little bit of being caught brainwashing, uh, miseducation, uh, conditioning. Uh, and then you say, well, why is that? What's behind that? Well, of course, you know, the, the PhDs and the central bankers, they would like uh, a fiat money standard because they control it. You can't control gold. I mean, you've got to go dig it up and mine it and it's a costly process. And so people, uh, it's basically a power grab by those who are, you know, control the levers of the money supply. And I don't think it's any secret that if you control money, you control behavior, you control politics, you control economics. So the PhDs have taken over money, but they, and they've taught everyone that gold has no place. If you own a dollar balance, you are a creditor, and your choice is only to be a creditor of a commercial bank. And if you think commercial banks are transparent and sound, then maybe you can choose that. Or you can be a creditor of the Fed. You can have paper cash that you hoard under your mattress, and then you're a creditor to the Fed directly. Or you can be a creditor to the Treasury and buy Treasury bonds. Of course, there's a little game between the Treasury and the Fed. The Fed is just like a bank. It issues its liability, which is the Federal Reserve note, in order to fund its portfolio of assets, which is primarily the Treasury bond. But the Treasury bond is payable only in terms of Federal Reserve notes, which are backed by Treasury bonds, which are payable in terms of Federal Reserve notes. So it's a circular scheme, and it's basically monetary counterfeiting. You know, if you have a dollar balance calling that money, you are a creditor in this system that's based on counterfeiting at its root. Just a quick interruption to say thank you for supporting our channel. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video content. It really does make a difference. Also, a quick mention and shout out to one of our sponsors, Birch Gold Group. With over three decades in the industry, Birch Gold Group is one of the most trusted companies for gold investing. Whether you are starting a brand new gold IRA or rolling over an existing account, the company will make this process seamless and stress-free. With endorsements from respected and renowned voices across America and one of the lowest investment minimums in the gold IRA industry, Birch Gold Group makes it easy to get started investing in precious metals. To find out more about Birch Gold Group and how this trusted gold investment company can help safeguard your coveted retirement savings, see the 
link in the video description to visit Birch Gold's official site to receive a free gold investing guide. Also, check out our video review of Birch Gold Group by clicking the link in the top right. Now, back to the episode. Whenever a country wanted to debase its currency, so it wants to go to war, taxes aren't popular. It's hard to tell someone, we have to raise your taxes to go kill these people on this other continent. If you're being invaded, it's one thing, but if you're going to go invade others or do things like that, it's hard to sell that. And so rulers have historically turned to debasement, but debasement is actually a pretty slow process with coinage. You have to physically pull the money in with taxes or other methods, remelt it into these you know, debased forms, making use of the fact that you can get more coins with that. Uh, and so it takes time to to pull that in, remelt it, and then uh, try to do it in such a way that's not super obvious and, and it just kind of, you, you just kind of boil the frog slowly, so to speak. What I recommend to investors, you want about 10% gold. Yeah, you know, maybe a little more if you want to lean into it, if you have a higher risk appetite. But institutional allocations are about 1.5%. So I'm recommending 10. So there's a long way to go there. People need to get a lot more gold. It has gone up uh, about uh, 600% or more since 1998. But I would see it sort of chugging along with a lot of volatility. And then I think we're getting close to the stage where it's just going to gap up. Meaning, you know, one day it'll go up $100 an ounce and that'll make a lot of headlines. And the next day it'll go up another $100 dollars an ounce and that'll make headlines and all the talking heads on TV will go, oh, it's a bubble, don't be a fool, etc. But then, you know, the next day, boom, it keeps going. Then what happens is then people wake up and say, oh, gee, I better get some gold. The 5,000 year history, gold is the one asset that has outlasted numerous business cycles, economic downturns, booms and busts, stock market bubbles, and the rise and fall of every currency. And unlike depreciating, faith-based, fiat currency, gold is no one's liability. It builds wealth while preserving it. Owning physical gold and precious metals requires responsible sourcing of grades, purity, condition, the best prices, transparency, and most of all, security and storage. Gold IRAs are tax-deferred means of owning physical gold and ensuring all these investing principles are met. We have reviewed and vetted the best gold IRA companies that meet all these requirements. See the link in the video description to access the free gold investment guides. If you have 100k of retirement savings to protect and want to take advantage of the best gold prices, see the link in the video description to sign up for the free gold and silver web conference hosted by Augusta Precious Metals. Thank you for watching.